Oh, it's nice when you keep coming back like that. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's February 12th. It is Monday. I hope you're enjoying our shorter format. I used to cover three stocks at a time, which I thought was handy, but that was like a 45-minute video at best. So now we're only covering one stock per video. It's closer to 15 minutes. How's that fit into your schedule? So what I do on this show is I just share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. I look for stocks that have a hot chart and a hot piece of news. I figure if I bring those two things together, I've got a strong likelihood of finding a stock that's going to run. And I got a stock right now that is meeting all the criteria. This is JYD Jayud Global Logistics. Now, it was on December 21st, she took this huge drop from roughly $3 down to a buck. And I can't figure out why. On the 19th, two days before, she had some really good news. And still, she fell on the 21st. Well, here recently, she had some big news about two deals she has just entered into. And it has turned the chart around. And it is now marching towards that 200-day SMA, looking like it's going to break out. Now, what really got my attention were all of the insider buys. I think that's the real sincere token that she is going to be moving here soon. So JYD, she finished today at $1.15 with almost 34% gains. And this is another hot penny stock on the major exchanges, coming with all those benefits I keep talking about. No transaction fees, get in and out for free, trade pre-market, after market. No, you don't need special permission or qualifications, just get in there and trade. Be sure to change the time period, not a day order, it's an extended period order. And let's face it, there's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchanges. And it is safer. So what does Jayu Global do? Well, they tell us that they provide a range of cross-border supply chain solution services in the People's Republic of China and internationally. They are a delivery company. They ship a lot of goods. They ship them on ships. They ship them across the road. They ship them in the air. They're a big logistics company. So what was the relative volume around this Chinese company today? Oh, we got a big jump in volume going from 65,000 shares to just under a million today. Big increase. Share structure for JYD? Doesn't look bad. Outstanding share count is about 13 and a half million. I don't know what the float is, but it's not going to be higher than that. And if that is what the float is, that's a great float, 13 and a half million. But it could be considerably less. It could be a lot better. Market cap for the company, we're at 11.6 million. Financials for JYD. Ah, those are looking pretty good, aren't they? Jumping year after year. 2020, they're at 44 million. 21, 85 million, virtually doubling their revenues. And in 2022, they hit 93 and a half million. Now we know they're millions, not thousands, because right up here they tell us we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Now it's kind of sad they're not making more money. I don't mean revenues, I mean profit. <laughs> they made 93 and a half million dollars and only got to keep 5.3 million. That's expensive profit. Looking at our quarterlies, we don't get any with this NASDAQ stock, but we do get a balance sheet, so let's jump into that. Cash and cash equivalents. What do we got in the bank? About $4 million. Total assets, about $18 million. Total liabilities, yes, less, about $13.2 million. So that gives us positive stockholder equity for the investors of $4.8 million. Let's take a look at those disclosures. We got lots of information there. And it's all good. All of it is good. These SC 13 G's, every time you see one, guaranteed good news. That is a new owner coming into the business. They bought enough shares that they own a percentage of the company and normally get a voice, a vote in the company. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them here since the 5th of February. Now let's dive into these so you can get an idea of what's going on. Up here is the name of who is investing. This is Europa Investment. They got 6.4 million shares. Whoa, look at that. They own 30% of the company now. The next one is Tucana Investments. They bought 3.6 million. 
Oh man, look at that, 24% folks. That's 54% already of the company that they have sold off. This is Pengio. They got 800,000 shares, got 5.5%. Ganymede got themselves 800,000 shares, another 5.5%. Here we have 4Max Investment. They bought a million. They've got 6.7%. And the very last one is Cassini Investment. They've got themselves 1.7 million shares. That gives them a total of 11.5% interest in the company. When you add that all up, folks, we are over 80% of the company that has just been bought up by new investors. To me, that is a serious token sign that something is about ready to happen. So let's take a look at that news now. So I've got two pieces of news here I want to share with you. One we've basically already talked about a little. The good news that came out two days before the big drop. On December 19th, the company announced a new air charter service agreement with JD Airlines. Basically, they have got this trial contract with JD Airlines for 100 round trips planned to go to the Philippines. This is to boost their cargo capacity and trade relations. So they're working in China, they're working in the Philippines, but that's not the only place they're working. The news that came out on the 23rd really shows you how big their footprint is. Let's just dive on into this. Jayud announces entry into agreements to acquire two international logistic companies embarking on an acquisition strategy to expand service offerings and geographic footprint. The company today, on the 23rd of January, announced that Shezhuan Jayud Logistics entered into an equity purchase agreement to acquire 51% stake in two international logistic companies, Aranda and Jainu. I'm going to stick to the short versions of their names. So notice they got 51% of each company. They have controlling interest now. That's three logistic companies that I'm aware of that they have. Now, we're not going to go deep into it, but I want you to get an idea of the footprint. Looking at a little bit of the information for each one of these companies, Aranda has cultivated an extensive client base and a proficient team with branches in key ports across China and a global presence through agents in the Americas, Europe, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Aranda specializes in comprehensive logistics services for specialty goods. Then we've got Jainu. Jainu specializes in supply chain management, domestic cargo transportation agency, loading and unloading, and information consulting services within the Middle East trade lane. So we've got the Philippines, we've got the Middle East, we've got Africa, we got the Americas, we've got Europe. I mean, I think the only places they're not in, probably not the United States, but Australia, New Zealand, Antarctica, but they've got everything else, folks. Their revenues are growing. Their business is growing. Logistics is always a good business. Moving your freight across the road, overseas, over air. We have to have shipping. Shipping never stops. Talk about a constant business. That's what we're talking about. So I really like this company, but what really has me excited about this company are all those investors coming in. 84% of the company being bought up and not one news press. That is all happening behind the scenes. I'm excited. Let's go take a look at that chart. You ready to do some charting? Me too. Charting is my favorite part of due diligence. So we're taking a look at Jayu Global Logistics, ticker JYD, and we're going to chart this on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So I got this opened up to a six-month, four-hour view with our high bubble being in July of last year at $4.19. Off of that high bubble, she fell down to the 200, bounced on that a couple times, and then lost her footing and fell hard, all the way down to this strong support of $1.77, which is the one we are looking to shoot towards. It is just over the 200-day SMA. Now, off of this strong support, she was showing a lot of strength. She was Bouncing through that 200 over and over again. Though it's way too early to be trying to break out, it is steep. If she tries to get up on top of that, she's just going to fall back down. But do you think she cares? 
No, she did it anyways. She jumped here from about a dollar eighty up to three dollars and eleven cents, and she was up there well over a week. Then on December twenty first, she had that big crash, and I have no idea why. She had really good news two days before, and she fell from about two dollars and seventy five cents down to a dollar fifteen. And she was not done falling. She continued dribbling downhill, sneakily crossing the 200 hall in her downtrend, hitting a low here on February 8th of 81 cents. And off of that low bubble, she's changed her trend. She's in an uptrend now. She has pushed herself through all of the SMAs. Our nine day has gone through them all. The price jumped from 86 cents up to $1.52, falling back to the nine and staying above it. All of our SMAs are just now starting to turn up. Lots of volume came into the picture today, and our oscillators are very strong. We just had a crossover on our PPO, Percentage Price Oscillator. It's climbing. Our MACD has just crossed the signal line. Big green bars accumulating. And our RSI, though she was up in the overbought, is still hot at 66 right now. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Whoa, look at that 200-day SMA coming down fast and hard and then bent right here. Didn't curve, it bent. Continued downhill, and I think I see why it broke out today. She is going flat right now, folks. Tomorrow, I think she'll be totally flat, and it'll be perfect for the bounce and the surge. So off of this low bubble, she bounced off of this 200-day haul, which I want you to take notice of, folks. She has been heating to the 200 all of this time. The 200 haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then puts more credence on current prices. And penny stocks love the 200 haul, as you can see. Once she dipped underneath it, she jumped up to the 50, and then when the 200 got flat, she broke out over that too. Came back down, tapped on that 9-day SMA really hard, jumped up and floated over the nine day the rest of the day. And then after market, she came back down and right now she is sitting on her nine day SMA looking secure. All of our other SMAs, they are getting ready to cross the 200. These are gonna be golden crosses. These are gonna give strength to the price rise. Oscillators, well, they had a lot of strength, but that little red bar at the end of the day has cooled things off just at this moment. Take a look at that five day, five minute. So five, four, three days ago, she was underneath the 200, hit that low of 81 cents, got on top of the 200 and then took a dip. Let's call it a crouch before the pounce, hitting that $1.52 and coming back and bouncing off of the 50. Now this support resistance right here, I got that using my Fibonacci. That is dead center of that run. Always looking to see where she falls to. I expect it to fall at least 50%, hopefully less. If she comes down to that 50% mark or any higher, chances are she's going to continue rising. But if she falls below that 50% mark, chances are she's going to continue falling until she hits a strong SMA, which is exactly what she did here. She hit the 50-day SMA. She's bounced off it a few times. And right now, she's actually arguing with it. And it looks like she's losing the battle. Oscillators, they too are weak right now. Now, I do like the four-hour chart. I think that looks strong. I think those new owners, those new investors coming in, I think that says something. I'm not quite sure what. I know they've just made two deals. They've got two new companies that's probably going to increase their revenues drastically. But you got all these big investors coming in buying what? 80% of the company. Something's going on. That's why I'm putting JYD on my watch list. And I think you should too. But of course, do some more due diligence. I didn't cover everything. The more you know, folks, the more you're going to grow. See ya.